Hi, beautiful. God bless you. I'm so glad you're here. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. Oh, it just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Don't it, though? I love living this life, you know. I mean, I, I wish I would have received Jesus Christ, my Lord, earlier on. Um, but here in my heart, I, I, I am grateful. I am grateful that God saved my soul. Amen. Um, I, I have to be careful because I don't want to sound selfish that I'm not grateful for how everything is. It's, uh, come on now, it's gooder and gooder. But I do wish that, man, you know, and, I, and, and Father God knows my heart. I wish, you know, I was younger when I come to know Jesus and have this relationship, right? And I know there, is it just me? I know there's many of us in here, right? And it, ain't that the truth? It's like, but you know what? Glory be to God, here we are, amen? Hi, beloved. Oh, such a beautiful family, praise God. Um, so, but yes, let's give God praise, hallelujah. How many first-time guests do we have here? First-time guests, praise God. Our beloved up front. Man, I, hey, you got to give me a high five because first-time guest and you straight up come to the front. Amen. Hey, that's a beloved daughter of God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Whew, you got. I'm you. Amen. Yeah. Well, my beloved, this message is just for you. Amen. On the count of three, family. One, two, three. Welcome home. Welcome home with all of our hearts in Jesus' name. Father God did all this for you. For you. Amen. And I know you know that. Praise God. But we love to say welcome home to all our family. I ask for your prayer because um, I had two, mes two messages put together today. And both times Holy Spirit said, nope, nope. And so it got to the point where it was half an hour before coming to church, and I said, Father, I need a word. Amen. I need a word. I need a word from you, Father. I need, and Father God says, it's my word. I'll give it to you when I want. And then I realized conviction, right? And glory be to God, we clap because Lord Jesus is right here. Amen. He's our Savior. He loves us. Amen. Say it with me, God loves me. There's no question about God's love for you. This is why Lord Jesus Christ came. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Listen, uh, beloved family, we have to get this through sometimes our, I'll, I'll just throw myself under bus, my thick head. You know, so, so, sometimes somebody can come at me sideways and, and I, listen, I'm not always holy. I'm always this good looking, but I'm not always I can't believe there's too much laughter going on back there, okay? But you know, I'm not always, right? We're human. And what happens that moment where you fail? Oh, immediately that devil, right? Immediately that devil wants to say, look at you. You think, you think you're a good person? You think you deserve anything good? You call yourself a preacher? You call yourself a pastor? You call yourself... And it just, and if I allow it, if I allow it, Sister Michelle, it will come even faster than I can battle. Say that word with me, battle. And this is what the enemy wants to do to your soul. You see, there's, there, there's a war over your soul. I promise you, if you can get that right now, if there's anything that you get this evening, if you could get that part right now, oh my goodness, Get ready for a life change in Holy Spirit. Amen. Get ready for such breakthrough because you are now well aware 
that there is a full-blown war over your soul. But the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ is this. When you call upon his name and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit is sent from the Father. And Holy Spirit enters into his now newfound home. And when he, he, he goes through your breath, hallelujah, he goes through your breath and you take that breath as a beloved child of God and you breathe him in and Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, mine. Now last time I checked, when Father God says mine, can anybody take it away? Let's give God praise for that, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. So here I am. Everything's perfect, including me. Amen. Amen. That's your words from this morning. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise God. I would tell you right now, but the microphone's on. But we'll get it to you. We'll get you. That. We'll get you. Last time I done did that, my goodness, I had all kinds of texts that you would not believe from, <laughs> from all over the place, right? So, um, yeah, I'll get, we'll make sure that uh, we'll get your information here shortly. Amen. Say it with me, my soul. my soul. There's war over your soul, but the beauty is, as a blood-bought, as a blood-bought beloved child of God, the war is... Some of y'all ain't going to like this. The war is what you allow to come in. The war is if you allow your emotions to start dictating what you do. The war is when this devil whispers something that you have the nerve to go, what did you say? You see, a true warrior in Christ, a beloved child of God, when they hear the whisper of the enemy, this is what they do. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because, Father God, I give you praises. I rebuke this voice. I cast this voice right now to the pit of hell where it belongs. Father God, I want you to mute, mute this devil. This devil cannot speak to me in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have actually practiced that in your life? Amen. Look around, family. Look around. And the beauty about this anointing is this. Brother Darren, when it becomes, say this word with me, a reaction. When it becomes a reaction, oh, rock em, sock em robots. When this becomes your reaction, Miss Hazel, when the enemy tries to speak to you and immediately, immediately, immediately you're giving thanks to Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty lays the smack down on that devil. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm like you. You're like me. I don't, give the, I don't give the devil any credit. I don't. See, now hear my heart. I hang out with lions. I hang out with lions. I don't hang out with house cats. May I explain the difference, Brother Gary? I'm glad you asked. Ain't even paying attention to me, but I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Beloved family. Sis, can I get a hug? Yeah. Hallelujah. You guys are beautiful. Let me explain. A house cat likes to have conversations with the devil. A house cat actually likes to be pet. Come on, let's bless Sister Jackie. I rebuke that, right? We ain't no... I, <laughs> Mama K over there. <laughs> a lion. A lion. Come on now. A lion. Come on, Mom. 
The moment that enemy even breathes in your, in your direction, you give a mighty roar. And that mighty roar is the Lion of Judah, amen? And that mighty roar puts every spiritual thing in its place, amen? Come on. Let me hear you roar. roar. Amen? Say with me, my soul. I'm going to read from Psalms 121. This is what it says. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. Come on now. The Lord. Say with me, my Lord. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Say with me, my soul. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen? So we talk about the soul. And we know that this is your very being. Amen. amen? This is your very being. Now when we talk about the, the, your very being, we, we, we discussed this last night. And um, you know what? I'm going to go over there real quick. Because even though, even though we discussed this la last night. Um, there's some of y'all that ha have, not, have not heard it or don't know. 1 Thessalonians 5, we discussed it last night, and we're going to go ahead and go into, uh, you know what, I want to start in 16, even though where we need to be is 23. I want to start in 16. Rejoice always, amen? amen. When Father says always, does that, does that mean every time? Every time. Amen. Always! Right? This does, wait. So when God says rejoice always, does it mean rejoice when the bank account looks good? Because I will be sad a lot. Now, don't read too much into that. If Holy Spirit tells you to give me something, give me something, all right? But don't read too much into that. What I'm talking about is that if we're moved, if we're moved through our emotions in us in rejoicing, we got issues. See, tonight, God wants you to actively make the decision that beyond what's happening in your situation or circumstance, you choose to rejoice because Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. I believe strongly with all my heart as a church, this is where we fall short. The word of God just said, rejoice always. My goodness, that's real short. Verse 16, it's almost as short as Jesus wept. Well, hold on a minute. It's just two words, so it's not short, right? If we can choose to rejoice, then I promise you in Jesus' name, the blessings will come. But isn't it amazing that in our culture, we rejoice when the blessings come? So what do we do when we're not rejoicing and we're waiting for the blessing? Many of us, oh, come on now. Many of us are, oh, come on, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. Man, Jennifer, I, I've been down this season for so long. I don't, can you pray for me? Because I need a breakthrough. Come on, pray for me. You know what, Darren, ain't nothing happened, right? What happens? We, we start to have diarrhea of the mouth. It becomes such a distraction where I'm going to tell you right now, I, if I choose to be that way, am not pleasing to the Lord. Now, here in my heart, I love what Sister Melissa preached on Sunday. Hallelujah. And, of course, Sister Amanda. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. <laughs> Woo! And here in my heart, say it with me, in a relationship, in a relationship with Father God, Father God doesn't want you to ever stop praying. Amen. Amen. But you have to have the relationship first. So how do you start a relationship? Well, let me ask you something. How did you start dating your wife? Right? Conversation. 
Hey, good looking. What? No. <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, like, how do you start the relationship, right? How do you start the relationship? Yeah. Oh, God forbid I started my relationship with, hey, come on, let's go. Are you kidding me? It's putting your best foot forward, right? Oh, come on now. I'm the only one then. You got to put your best foot forward hoping that the other person is receptive, right? And let's, come on, can we confess in God's house tonight? Many of us were fake. Many of us were fake. Straight up lying, straight up, right? Straight up lying, straight up. I don't know, I can't tell you how long I held gas being with Trish. Are we being honest with each other? She thought, man, this is a good boyfriend. He don't fart around me or nothing. Ask her now after 21 years of marriage. Sometimes I preach a little too real and I'm going to go ahead and apologize. But I want the reality to sink in. That we try to, we, we, we try, I believe right now, some of you came into church and guess what? You put a mask on. Holy Spirit already showed me, guys. Come on now. I'm your brother. Have a little respect. And what Father God is saying, why do you put that mask on, my child? I love you. I receive you. You are perfect. You're my masterpiece. You come as you are. And as you leave it at the altar, I will take it from you. And I will bless you with a fresh anointing that when you get up off this altar, the chains will be melted away. And then you can walk, hallelujah, in the newness of life. Amen. Say it with me, my soul. All right, so let me read this, okay? Praise God. Because obviously Holy Spirit wants this done and pray for me because I'm trying my best to keep up with what God wants. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not, say with me, do not. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Right? When God says stay away from evil, does that mean some? It means all, beloved David, all. Amen? Listen, guys, men of God, if there's something that's catching your eye and Holy Spirit already checks you and you keep on doing it, there's an emergency taking place right now. If I'm talking to you tonight, Father God wants you to kill that at this altar. Because Holy Spirit is trying to save you from destruction. Amen. Daughters of God, same thing. I'm not ignorant. Amen. It's the same thing for ladies too. If there's perverse thoughts or if there's perverse things that you're doing, it has to stop. Is God a pervert? Does God cuss? Huh? So see, we need to make sure that if we're saying that we are who we, see, who we say we are, and praise God, let's give God praise, Brother Craig and Sister Lisa's here. We love you guys. We all know you went through some things. Amen. I got I, Church starts at 630. I'm just going to plug that in. But they went, they, they, they was helping out. They was helping. Yeah, they was helping out, right? Praise God. He spoke it out. Brother Matt spoke it out. Hallelujah. I talked to him earlier. He said, he said, my truck will start. Amen. He said, I'll be, I'll be, a he said it in the group text. Abstain from every form of evil. So let me ask you something. If I'm abstaining from evil, and let me just say, God bless you, water. You're beautiful, water. You're not bad. But illustration, this is evil, Okay. Only Trish, is, this is evil, okay? Yes? Evil like that. Is this abstaining from evil? I'm taking a selfie. I don't really do that, but I'm taking... Right? Is that abstaining from evil? Let me ask you something. 
<laughs> it's good to laugh in God's house, right? Let me ask you something. Is this abstaining from evil? You notice, I not only get away from it, I don't want to look at it. Right? I don't want nothing to do with it. The reason why Holy Spirit wanted to bring this forth is because there's some of you all that that's an actual person in your life. That God has already said, that is pure evil. Get away from it. But yet, you're being disobedient to the Holy Spirit, trying to tell God, oh, but you know what, I just need a love on them. May I tell you, God is not emotion. God is a person. And when the Bible said God is love, love manifested from heaven. He left heaven, came here. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Love has a name. His name is Jesus. So let me ask you something. If this thing has nothing to do with Jesus and is completely against Jesus, is this love? It's a lie from the pit of hell and it's trying to mess you up. Remember, we are in complete warfare right now. There's some of y'all that's been dating for years. And you're dating this garbage. But yet you're, you're, you're expecting God to bless you. And you keep blaming God because you're anchored. Y'all know what an anchor does, right? If I'm anchored to this thing and I know that I need to get there, I need to get right there to be in God's will, to do whatever God's telling me. You know what an anchor does? But God give you the power. Say it with me, power. God give you the power in Christ through his Holy Spirit to look at this very thing and say, no more in Jesus' name. Amen? I'm done with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, say it with me, I am done with it. Are you really done, boo-boo? Hmm? Abstain from every form of evil. Now may God, the God of peace himself, sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May your whole spirit, soul, and body. Holy Spirit says we're going to be in here for quite some time. I don't know if it's going to be repetitive. I don't know what, you know, Pastor John's going to preach on. I don't know what anybody preaches on. Amen. I trust in Holy Spirit. Amen. But the point that I'm making is how many of you agree that Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen. Right? All hands go up in his house. Hallelujah. You, can you imagine how that makes Lord Jesus feel right now? Oh, my goodness. Like Christmas morning. Right? Right? How many of you are excited on Christmas morning? Oh, right? So excited. Amen? I, I choose to live life this, this way. I'm excited because any time. Any moment of any time, the trumpet can go off and the skies open. <sighs> well, Pastor, why do you think like that? That sounds kind of weird. Or is that really how, you, how you, you see things? My beloved church family, I'll tell you right now, if I don't see things that way, my life... Listen, I love being a pastor. I'm called to do this. But if I didn't have this expectation that that trump is going to go off at any time and my Lord, my God is going to come save my soul, I'm going to tell you right now, it's so easy to give up. It's so easy to just throw in the towel. It's so easy to say, you know what, God, I'm so tired of your very own people that claim they're part of this church would cuss me, would come at me, would... would would do things that I would never thought. And you know the beauty of our God? Is he says, son, what did you do to my beloved? What did you do to Jesus? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Right? I'm so sorry. So say it with me. Soul. Does Father God own your soul? Do you belong to him? Do you carry the miracles? Hallelujah. You see, when, when you uh, openly allow God to 
bless your soul and you allow him in your thoughts. How many of you would agree life is completely different? Hey, man, come on. Right? Because I've, I've lived for 33 years thinking that I'm just having crazy conversations with myself. I lived for 33 years. I can't believe I just did all that chaos and damage. I can't believe I did that to those souls. And I just have these conversations. And guess what? The dang voice almost sounds just like me. But the glory of my God Almighty is that when he saved my soul, when he saved my soul, I noticed immediately there was silence. I noticed immediately that there was peace. But I'll throw myself under the bus. When it's quiet, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Especially for 33 years when you live in chaos. So what happens? You start opening the door to things that you're not supposed to open the door to because you don't like it so quiet and peaceful anymore. You guys are making it hard to preach tonight. Y'all are making it hard to preach tonight. Please bless them. If this is you, will you confess it tonight? You know, it takes a crazy pastor to tell you, beloved daughter of God, that the only man that deserves your heart is Lord Jesus Christ. It's not him. If he can't tell you that, he's not a godly man. The only one that deserves your heart, my beloved brother, Lord Jesus Christ. If she can't tell you that, then she's not a godly woman. But if you both say, oh, you're my, you're my everything, you're my everything, the devil's like, yeah, keep playing those games. Because I'm going to mess your everything up. Oh, am I preaching to somebody tonight? And thank you for that. Listen, you guys are great. You guys are in the overload. <laughs> but thank you for, do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? That if you make something else your everything, the devil will tear up your everything. But if you make God your everything, the devil says, I cannot have anything to do with you. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. So here it is. Are my thoughts pure that I'm just allowing him to flow through it? Well, pastor, explain. I'm thankful you asked me, Sister Jackie. In the past, my old dead self, I know you all won't judge me. I'm just going to confess it. My old dead self, even as a Christian, I know, shame on me. I would be quick to judge people. Call yourself a Christian and you're cussing. Look at you. Huh? Something as simple as that. You know? Now, hear my heart. It is wrong as a child of God to speak that way. It is wrong. But I'm not the judge. He's the judge. Amen? He's the judge. What I'm supposed to do as a beloved son of God is when I hear it, oh, Lord Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, help him. He spoke that. And number one, Father, guard me from that. I don't ever want to. I don't ever want to pollute your holy place. I don't ever want to allow darkness in, in your light. And Father God, just rebuke that. And Father, I pray that that soul, I don't even know his name. I pray, Father God, that he will get convicted in, in a relationship with you where he don't want to hurt you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. He loves you. He's willing to bless you right now with all your heart's desires. But what he needs from you is your everything. Amen. You see, our God is a God of order, which means... He will bless you, but what he needs is an offering. We got lazy where we say to God, well, I have Jesus. I don't need to do anything anymore. Could you imagine after my wedding day, I tell Trish, go in the kitchen, cook. 
I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> My elder looked at me like, you better correct yourself. <laughs> That's just a story, honey, right? But see, I love moments like this because you hear me transfer what Holy Spirit is teaching us in worship and, and applying it to everyday life in a relationship in this scenario of marriage, right? And when you hear it like that, you're like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That just sounds so silly. There's no way. But why do we treat God that way? See, there's the conviction right there. I see it in you. Why do we treat God that way? There's some of us that the only time we worship God is right now where you're seated here. We can't do that. Say it with me, blameless. blameless. Are, is your soul blameless? Are your thoughts, huh? Are your thoughts pure? Are your thoughts love? Are your thoughts all of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, kindness? Is that your thoughts? I'm asking you, beloved child of God, you don't need to answer me. You take this up with the Father, right? Are your thoughts of him always? Well, pastor, you're kind of asking me to do a little too much. No, I'm not. Hello, this is the gooder life right here. Amen. It's your decision. Say it with me, it's a choice. Right? You remember when you first met your, your, your let's go back, let's go back even further before your wife. Or, you remember when you had your first crush? Oh, come on. Look at your faces. I wish you could look like that while I'm preaching. <laughs> How often did you think of that crush? Right? Pass notes back and forth. Huh? Rub it under your armpit so it smells like you. I, I'm the only one, I guess. I wonder why nobody ever said yes. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Where are you with the Lord? Where are you with the Lord, huh? Do you smell of him? Yeah? Do you smell of God? Isn't that sweet? You could be so close to somebody that you start smelling like him. You don't believe me. I was an addict for 15 years. You, you would know exactly what I was into because you would smell it on me. Am I preaching? You see, God has a scent. God has an aroma. And the beauty of his aroma is that when it's all over you, every foul, demonic, garbage thing stays away. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil don't want nothing to do with you. Man, talk about spraying off. Right? It keeps everything away. Amen? This is what happens when we have no slides and overheads, and I praise God this is what Holy Spirit wanted. Amen? Say it with me, Spirit. Do you talk to him? Is Holy Spirit all over your business? Let me ask you gooder. Let me ask you gooder than that. You say you belong to Jesus. You say you belong to Jesus. You pray to Jesus. You say Jesus' name. You say all these things. But let me ask you something. When Lord Jesus Christ speaks back through Holy Spirit, are you listening? Are you obeying? Say it with me, relationship. You see, the beauty about this relationship with the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is he's the only one that can rebuke every spiritual piece of garbage there is. He's the only one. Well, pastor, you just don't understand how long I've been dealing with this addiction. You're right, I don't. But what I do know is when you open yourself to Holy Spirit and you spend time in the Father's presence, he will show you that you're not an addict, 
that you're a beloved child of God. Amen? And there is no, it was, it's, it's all a lie. Say it with me, it's all a lie. So what Father God is asking of you tonight is, will you allow my spirit to touch you, to bless you, to saturate you in such a way that it just completely wrecks you? This is what I love about our God. It's a choice, beloved daughter of God. It's a choice. Just like the glorious choice you made last night. Hallelujah. I love it. Your eyes just got that big. You're like, don't do it, Joey. Don't do it. <laughs> it's a choice. And all God is waiting for is what do you got? What do you got? Huh? What do you got? How are you going to come at me? How, how are you going to bless me? What's your offering? Right? What do you, I want you to examine your heart right now. Every eye closed in here. You don't need to stand up. Every eye closed, head, to, head down. What could be your possible offering to God of the universe tonight that you know that he has been trying to ask you to give it up? You could hear Father speaking. Will you make tonight the night that I'm going to give it to you, Father God? I'm going to give it to you. Because to our Heavenly Father, there is no small offering. Everything is huge. And he wants it tonight. Amen? You can open your eyes. We're going to close in one of my favorite scriptures, Sarge. One of my most favorite and it's, um, it's a scripture that I hold near and dear ever since we got saved. And uh, it comes from John 10, 10. Lord Jesus Christ says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Lord Jesus Christ says, I have come. Say with me, he came. He came. That they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. When Lord Jesus Christ says that he, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me break that down in what Holy Spirit just said. The devil wants to steal your soul. The devil wants to kill your body. And the devil wants to destroy your spirit. Is that not our three-part being? Can you get an amen? amen? I mean, help me out, right? Is that not our three-part being that God who created us said that we're a three-part being? Amen? amen? That we are a soul, soul, body, and spirit. Amen? amen? So let me, let me, this is very important for us to get tonight before we get to this altar. The devil's job is to try to steal your soul. It's complete warfare, right, over your soul? So how do you lock it down? Number one, Jesus Christ is Lord. Boom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Amen. <laughs> Covered by the blood. Amen. Now it's a relationship with the living, say it with me, living God. Living God. Why, is he, why is he a living God? Hello, you're alive. Amen. You're right here. Amen. And he's alive inside of you. And in this relationship, in, in, in just training your soul and sub, submitting your soul, the beauty about our God is that you allow him to reign in your thoughts and in your emotions. And say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit manifests in such glorious power in you. There's many of us that we speak in tongues. But you know what I love about all of our church family is? That's the intimacy be between me and my father. You see, many of us, we learn behavior Listen, I'm not picking on any religion. You, you rarely hear me talk about any other religion. I'm just saying we learn behaviors from other places we've gone to worship. And guess what? We get cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. All right? Okay, so it's just me. Right? And next thing you know, I'm like doing a, doing a running man or whatever, you know. It's like, what is he doing? He's doing a dolphin. It's like I learned it from the other place. And I saw a movement of God, right? Well, guess what? The only movement of God there is, is in your heart. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo! That's the bottom line. 
That's, see, we become a culture where we're chasing after a feeling. Rebuke that, Sister Jackie, can you say this in the microphone? I rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. We're not chasing a feeling. We're not chasing some charismatic preacher or some, you know, uh, uh, we're, not, we're not chasing nothing. You know why? We already got God. It's done. We are saved. You can't be more saved. So you want to live this life more abundantly you want to know the secret I'm glad you asked Sister Virginia gosh you're on fire you asked me with your eyes but you already know the the answer because we've had these conversations you want to live a life more abundantly here's the secret and this is the weapon to be content in everything meaning everything is perfect Jesus Christ died for you my life is perfect. Well, pastor, you, don't you deal with this? Don't you? Listen, that's probably what I'm dealing with. But my life is perfect because I have a perfect God. Amen? I have a perfect God. You see, you see what happened? You see, see some of y'all ain't going to like this, but I don't care. You see what happened there? I recognize who God Almighty is and in all of his glory that I'm not going to drag him down and spit on him because of my garbage. I want to honor and have reverence and recognize and bless and allow God to be God Almighty in my life and in his church. Amen? In my life, in his church, in my family, in this community, over your children, over your grandchildren, over your great-grandchildren, I want my God to be God. Amen? Here you go. When you have this revelation that, Father... I'm sorry, I repent. I am sorry that I tried to put you in a box, that I tried to make you a God of my limitations. Rebuke that. Here's the beauty. You ready? You ready, brethren? When you submit 100%, his presence, his glory, his spirit that lives in you will bless you with the life more abundantly. Amen? The only way you can live this gooder and gooder life is if you're all in. Amen. Amen. Are you all in? You can stand up on your feet. Praise God. Did you all get something out tonight? Praise God. So we, we, we in worship, say it with me, in worship, say it gooder in spirit and truth. We lifted up the name of Lord Jesus Christ, blessing our Heavenly Father God, and allow His Holy Spirit to teach us tonight, as we do in every worship service. We're not bragging on nobody here. All the glory and boasting goes to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? So Holy Spirit exposed what the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me repeat. He wants to steal your soul. Let's give God praise. There's Brother Matt and Sister Cynthia. Hallelujah. You spoke it out, and you're here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just kick every foul thing in the teeth. The devil wants to steal your soul. Guess what? It ain't going to happen. Amen. Now, here's the question. Hallelujah. My wife's excited, and I love it. Here's the question. Are you actually going to help the devil and torment your own soul? Say it with me. No more. Hallelujah. So the devil tries to steal your soul. He tries to kill your body. You don't believe me? Look at all this garbage going around all this world right now, right? He's trying to kill people's body, and he's trying to destroy your spirit. How does he try to destroy your spirit? The moment you have a conversation with, with that garbage enemy, he'll start putting demonic things in your heart, in the Holy of Holies. Well, Pastor, explain. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked, Sister Jennifer. You're on fire too. Praise God. Check this out. Holy Spirit told me, don't you look at that website. I don't even want you to go in there anymore. Okay, Father, I won't. But I decide, just a little peek. Amen. I love it. Every one of you are like, don't you hurt Holy Spirit. But this is just a story, okay. It is, it, in Jesus' name, it's not going to happen. 
So what do I do? I peek at it. Now what happens? It enters. It starts, it starts wrestling with my thoughts. You nailed it, Sister Lisa. Seven stronger come. And now they build house in the Holy of Holies. And now I'm wondering why I can't even focus on being thankful to my Father and being thankful for my Lord Jesus Christ and being thankful that his very breath, his very spirit lives in me. You know why? Because I allowed the thing to come in and say with me, no more. So the beauty is, Holy Spirit says, you expose the devil and what he's trying to do to my children, my holy church. Now show the glory of God, and this is it, and we're going to close. Father God, hallelujah. Father God, he holds your soul. And no one can touch it. Father God, he crucified your body. In the only way. Lord Jesus Christ. Father God now lives in my spirit through my Holy Spirit who sealed my salvation for all of eternity. And now all of heaven and all his army angels surround and protect me and all of my loved ones all because of his holy blood. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Come to the altar. Hallelujah.